Today I'm going to show you some compositing techniques. It's something that we did in altering this uh, um, Indian movie star's uh, face. We started off with uh, Shariah Saran, um, this Indian film actress, and as you recall, what I wanted you to do was to alter her face, alter to the point of removing all her jewelry, covering her hair, and removing this nose uh, jewelry, and her earrings, and coloring her skin and her lips. Um, in my exercise that I uh, showed you in class, um, this is what we ended up doing. I ended up tattooing her face, placing that over, and then just slightly coloring all of this particular image. So, with that in mind, we saved this particular image and we isolated all the paths. We isolated this path, which was part of her face. We used that to create her mouth. We also worked on her eyes and her dress whites of her eyes and her ear, just so that we could isolate particular areas and color them in with a variety of techniques that uh, we did before, which was painting and overlaying. The layers are all here, where we ended up sequentially going through all of these. And uh, I'll just show you briefly how we went about that. So we took that, which was a live trace object, we merged it together. Um, and we'll go back over that again in class. Um, but then we started taking individual elements. So there are her eyes that we pasted over using the cover overlay effect. The mouth, once again, we pasted that in place. Um, we used a variety of pieces of her hair, as you can see here, with different uh, values of all of the different areas, um, trying to get more and more detail. Then we merged them as we went along. So there's the eyebrows that we merged, and there's some hair that we pulled down. And we had to cover a lot of these things up from the original. So we filled in that area with green just to be underneath the hair. Because this hair, as you can see, would have had some spots open. So we just threw some green underneath. And then we ended up finishing up with that and then creating that path. So once you merge it together, which was this, we can just select that particular piece and copy it because we're going to need it in our next step. Um, I'm providing you with this particular, um, I guess, photograph by Herb Ritz, it's a famous photograph of Cindy Crawford and it's right there. And we're pasting in the actual, whoops, close this, pasting in that off, pasting in the head of, and here's the original photo, if I can find it, there it is. And we pasted this in. And let's see, there's our head. So we pasted it in on top of her and shrunk it down. The next part of it was we were going to draw more paths. Drew this path for her leg and shoulder. What we're trying to do is composite this onto another body so that we can use it in um, our next exercise. Once again, this is uh, photo compositing a large variety of, 
of images together to create a new image. So we're just going to go ahead and make a selection of that shoulder path that we already had. As you can see, there's the marching ants. And we make sure we're on the correct layer, which is the background layer. And we copy and we paste. We call that shoulders. And there they are. If you try to make this path as accurate as you can, zooming in at least 200%. And as you can see, you can zoom in by actually doing that or by just doing the command plus key. And as you can see, I used a little artistic license here because I didn't need all of her neck here because the angle of the head from my previous model is at a different angle. So we wanted to make sure that that, that we copied into, excuse me, where am I? I'm not there. Let's just tear these guys off, throw them away. So, paste her in once again, and scaling her down, we don't want to scale down this path, so we have to select off of it. See, it's already selected, so we got to select off that. Transform. If we can't see the entire size of our head, remember we can scale down Photoshop objects, but we can't scale them up. We're just going to leave that head there for the time being, but as, as you can see, the reason why I wanted to show you is her head is at a different angle, and that's the reason why I made this so that it matched up with this neck. So we pasted her shoulders onto another layer. I'm just going to hide her head for the time being and throw that head away. Um, so we've got her shoulders, and we're going to go back to the head. We're going to select the color of green right there from her face. And we're going to use that as an overlay in this photo. So I'm going to go ahead and do a color overlay. The default is red, as we already know, but we're going to select the green. And we're going to do a variety of things. We're going to see what Multiply does. That's a little too dark color. It's about perfect. So that's what we'll do. Use color. So now we have that particular thing. We've already, and then let's just go and throw these guys away. Well, I won't throw them away just yet. I'll make the selection of her legs once again. When I drew the legs, or the outline of the legs, I was zoomed in at 200%. Make sure you're on the correct layer that you're going to copy from. Copy, paste, call these legs. Now here's a little trick. You can copy by right-clicking the style. Copy layer style and you can paste that layer style right into the legs. So now we have legs and we have shoulders that are already pasted in. The next step, and that's just more shoulders, I, I can't throw that away. And I can throw those extra legs away also. So our next step would be to copy this because we don't want to throw away our original head, we're just going to label it head original, even though it's slightly or quite a bit smaller than what we needed or what we pasted in. Now we're going to scale this down to make sure that it fits in the right spot. We 
want to get this as close as we can. So, and we can see now that by shrinking it down, the actual color overlay probably needs to be different. So, we're going to take this and use the color picker and pick it from there. Maybe a little lighter. Okay. okay. And see. We didn't do it on the legs. There it is. Heavy layer style. Piece layer style. It's not quite good. Let's do the shoulders. So again, we'll take a color selection or a color overlay. It might be a matter of changing these things. So let's do this. Two. Still don't like that green. It's not quite right. That's better. As you can see, if you play around with these values, you're trying to get closer and closer to the original. I think I might be able to work with that. Now what I'm going to do is start erasing away parts of the head that I don't need. E is a shortcut to get to the eraser tool. I right clicks to get the eraser tool at smaller size. I'm going to take the hardness off. B, I'm going to move her head. It's starting to look okay. I'm just erasing away parts that I don't need. I want to reduce her head size just a little bit. I think that looks better. So now, next thing that I'm going to do is I need to outline her entire body so that I can take just the part that I need. So I've got the head and shoulders, but I don't have the dress. So by zooming in, I'm at 500% right here, more than what I need. P gets me to my pen tool. I'm just going to start neck and stay inside the line. Pull the Bezier arms down. Keeping, trying to be careful to stay within the outline rather than whoops. I did A so that I could select that again and back to P and I'm gonna scroll down. And as you can see there's pixelization here. It isn't ideal but for what we're doing when we're doing photo compositing and we're gonna be painting over the top of this it 
is enough resolution for what we need. Because we may end up reducing the size of this image more once we merge it together. And you can be selective about what you want to take and what you want to leave behind. Sometimes in the interest of speed, you can do this. A lot of people use the magnetic lasso, which is another way of trying to get the outline of the image. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if you want to be as accurate as you can, this is the most accurate way. And after practice you get to be pretty quick. The lasso, the problems that I have with it is that oftentimes it grabs more than what you want and sometimes it doesn't grab as much as you want and so if you actually try to outline it then and you, by the way, you can get away with using that sometimes, and we'll probably use that for other projects. But for this particular one, what we're trying to do is get it as accurate as we can so we can photocomposite it onto another document and use it there. Um, another advantage of doing this rather than using the lasso tool is that a path really doesn't take up any hard drive space. And when you're using magnetic lasso and you're creating a mask, I'll turn her head off for a second. And oftentimes, you're increasing the size of your document. So now we have that part of it. Now I'm going to zoom in and take out the areas that we don't need. So even though I've got her outline, I've got to make sure that there are holes where her arms are creating negative space. So, just a word about copyright while I'm doing this, just a reminder to those of you that may have forgotten. Avoid using other people's copyrighted images um, like the plague because it can do nothing but get you in trouble. But for these exercises and for uh, the sake of using photocompositing techniques and education, you can get away with it. So now I have a path. Here's another thing that I remind you all to do. When you have a work path and you start clicking with another path and you say to yourself, oh, I've got this path saved. Well, unless you double click on it and save it, it doesn't save the path. As soon as you take the pen tool and start clicking on a new path, um, it goes away, see? So, make sure that you save your path. Let's pull up right. And then save the document.
Now then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm on this layer where our background is. I'm going to copy and paste it to a new layer. Now I have just the body and the head. And let's zoom in on it. We can see that there's an opening here. And I can use my stamp tool. Reduce its size. And go ahead and fill this layer. Now the thing that we have to recognize this this is the shoulders that we copied so we might want to use that particular one we have a bit of a conundrum here so I'm going to just go ahead and copy from here and fill it in and there we go now obviously on her head you need to fill in all of this hair. We're just going to rough it in for right now and we'll come back later on and make sure that It has more of the look and feel we want. I'm going to drop that opacity down here. But once again, this is uh, okay for right now. Just to show you how you photo composite it. So there we go. So now she's all together. We're going to select these elements. I'm holding the shift key down and then to get this last one I held the command down. So all of them are highlighted. Those are the ones I'm going to merge together. Holding down option command E. And now I have all those layers merged together. And I can save this document. And I'm all prepared to stick her into my new background. So there is one of the techniques of photo compositing a new head onto another body and adjusting the color so that you can get it right. Um, by the way, adjusting the color once again, you do Command M and you can pull reds up and change her to a more fleshy tone. Or you could pull out blues, make her more yellow. So there's a variety of techniques, and we'll go into color techniques um, some other time. So this is uh, compositing a head onto a new body. Um, I'll see you in the classroom.